brought out the remote, I brought out props. I'm not going to bring out batteries because the batteries, I'm concerned about them getting too cold too quick. It's not that cold right now. No sunshine and stuff. Um, yesterday, this was giving me um, some trouble. It gave me a, uh, uh, the, the, what's it called? The, like, I have to calibrate the compass again, and it gave me a, uh, the ERC error, the, the um, inertia control unit error. So I'm going to recalibrate that. I'm bringing the, this out so I'm ready to go. I'm going to get something so that when I tip it, because you have to tip it onto the, onto the motors, it doesn't scratch it. So I'm going to get that. We're going to do this, and then after I calibrate it, I have to go back in. I have to take the camera off the gimbal a little bit to put a, um, a, a new battery in it. And that's kind of a pain in the butt because you have to pull it off the gimbal so it's all balanced and everything. To rebalance it and stuff, I've got to come put it back on on the machine and then kind of tune it up while it's on the machine. So. That's, that's something that we're just going to have to deal with, with a uh, heavy lift carrying a camera. Um, I don't think that's anybody else's fault, or I don't think there's that much you can do about it. Push and hold this. That's all you do. Just push and hold. Sorry about the sound. I normally have a little bit better setup as far as that goes. But we're just gonna hope that the uh, GoPro mic picks it up well. It's a GoPro 9, so. Maybe I'll move this a little bit so you can kind of see the. Uh, I don't know if you can see the screen or not. Start the calibrate screen right here. I'm going to start. I'm going to redo the compass, but I may end up doing it twice because I might do it after after I actually um, calibrate the uh, inertia control. So, so. There's that part. Finish the calibration. So now we're going to calibrate the IMU. Next, I'm going to start it. Let's do 105. says it's doing the calibration right now you can tell because it all the lights turn white so it says the aircraft's done that's because I need to put it um, face down so I'm gonna take because I'm worried about the those getting buggered up I'm gonna tip it this way you can tell um, which way to tip it because the uh, let's see and then it says, tip it um, to where, oh well, that's easy. The, the lights tip, turn, turn white on the motors to tell you which way is up.
that's got it. It says, please wait, do not disconnect the aircraft. Be careful not to move the aircraft. So that's what we're doing. I flew it yesterday and it completely disconnected from, uh, like I, I couldn't control the, uh... okay. Set it up here. Turned it off because I gotta go change the battery. Helicopter. But I need to give it a minute because I'm gonna go inside and change the battery on the other one. But yesterday the gimbal disconnected while well, the camera disconnected completely from the drone. Completely. So I'm gonna put you on pause for a second. Okay, I'm back. This is the A1 right here. And I've got the 24 millimeter F2.8 lens. It's a very small one. So it's very light. It's about mm, 600 grams, I think. That's it. Um, so hopefully that'll give me a little bit more flight time. Um, the gimbal has this little slot that has to go in another mating slot on the other side. It's a little um, interesting learning how to put it on the first time that's not too hard. I like to do it from the back so the pilot cam, the first person view camera is on the front and then you reach up from the back holding the gimbal in this hand, put it up, make sure that it actually snaps up into the, into the uh, so, so there's no gap between the ring that moves and the twist, and then you twist it. It doesn't really click, but you can kind of feel an indentation or a lock in there. And then you just wiggle it back and forth a little bit. Gotta bring it back over here. We're going to put on the props. The props are pretty easy to put on. They have this little, uh, I mean that's it, but they're black or silver depending on clockwise or counterclockwise motion. So they're, they're, like I said, pretty easy to put on. They've got, if you look at this, this is a little uh, slot that it goes into. And all you have to do is clip it in. That's it. So it's pretty simple. Okay, I'm going to take the camera, I'm going to reset it just a little bit here, so that uh, you get a picture of the whole thing. Make sure that we've got the sky a little bit, and uh, bring it back. And I'll bring the thing to show you, um, the remote and stuff. Um, but it should be about ready to go. So, again... Uh, it, oh, this is something, this is a reminder. These gloves are fantastic and it's cold out, but they have magnets in them. So you never wear your gloves with magnets in them or a watch band if it has magnets in them. I used to have an Apple watch band that had magnets in it. Never wear that while you're calibrating a compass. Bad things will happen. See, press, hold. See if that gimbal is balanced correctly because it's going to do something. Probably the gimbal will go ahead and do that as well. Turn this up here. Turn this up here. You put this on. Okay, it looks like that booted up all right. I've got this right here on the back. You can see where it's uh, plugged into the remote. They said that the antenna are right here and then in this handle. 
So it has a patch and a, a regular dipole, I think it's called a dipole antenna. I'm not getting anything from the remote saying that it's connected yet, which is a little bit of a concern, but not really. It looks, looks like it's connected now. It's already got 18 satellites, which is interesting. Um, the, the, the remote also is giving me no, no connection yet. It says aircraft not con connected again, so it goes in, in and out a little bit here. We'll see what happens. I'm on firmware 1.06. Have to remember to turn the camera on, but still, it's not showing the connection yet. So, oh, there you go. spin. I'm overexposed, is what's going on here. So, you can change the exposure down here. It's giving me that. There we go. It says unable to change settings, and then it allows me to change the settings, so I don't know what's going on with that. I've got the shutter left from last night when I was using it at one tenth. I think it's going the wrong way. There's actually, I have not gotten used to it yet, but you can control the uh, settings by pressing one of these buttons on the back and then um, using a scroll wheel, but I haven't, I haven't gotten that all worked out yet, so. And the aperture is at 2.8. Obviously, I don't want it at 2.8. We're not doing dusk shots yet. So I'm going to change it up to about a 4 or a 5. So it's probably a little slow for me. I've got it set to do a 2 second delay and then take a, a bracket. We're going to go in here and make sure we're on the 5.8 um, gigahertz on the radio right here. Down here it's on 5.5 five, and then on auto it says it's on 165. I'm going to change it to manual and put it on 48. Well, 157 is okay, but I know that these lower numbers, because I, I have a, a thing that I can look at them with my, um, on my laptop that tells me which, see, 157 and 48 are, are both, um, pretty strong signals, but I'm, I'm going to put it on 48 because I know that 157 has quite a bit of traffic on it from the condos that are sitting right here. Okay. I think we're ready. I'm going to, I think I'm going to lift it over. Sort of. Here we go. Okay. Here you've got first person view or not. So you can see the first person. I'm sorry. Yeah. First person view camera is down here. Where you click it again, it goes away. There's the, I think you can see the picture there. So I'm up that far enough, I'm gonna boogie on down here. And now you're not gonna see every bit of this, so I'll call out numbers and stuff. already at 89%, 88% on the battery.
I could see, and even with my earplugs in, I could see the, the drone still. I'm at 5.8 gigahertz, megahertz, and I have lost connection already. So that's not good. It's turning around and dropped the landing gear. And it thinks it needs to come home now. And actually, it stopped. I'm at 962 feet away and 207 feet of altitude. I can see it right there. It's right above that tree if you can see it from your angle. I have no, let's see. Obviously, I actually can see what it's doing, but I can't. Okay, now the signal has come back. So I'm going to spin it. I'm going to continue to move over. I'm at 78% battery. I'm at 1,097 feet away. I'm going to hit, actually I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the aperture so it'll let me. It says aircraft not connected again. Touch the aperture again. I'm going to see if I can't raise that up a little bit because I'm getting a little bokeh in the background. It says unable to change settings and it's giving me a remote control not connected. It says aircraft is not connected again. I can hear it aggressively turning. It's preparing to come back. I am going to do something crazy that I haven't done yet. I'm going to change the um, sensors. I don't know if it, let, it, it won't even allow me to change the, the sensors. I was going to put it on the auto instead of 48. So I'm going to bring it back here because plainly this is not handling it very well. But I'm at 59% on the battery already. So now that I'm landed, motors are shut down. I just got one error. I don't know what that is. I'm going to go back to sensors and radio. I'm going to change this to auto instead and see if that makes a difference. Remote controller, again, not connected, but that's probably what it does while it is um, changing the bands. So I'm going to change that aperture while I'm here at least to go up to you know, probably F7.1. I'll change that shutter speed down a bit. Compensate a little bit. And we'll try again. Seems like I've got a much better picture at this point, so that's that's good. So we'll presume that that's going to help a lot. So you know we're trying to align everything up. It's not great. Um, I am at 984 feet away in distance, and 
at uh, 312 feet of altitude. I'm going to hit the shutter button for the first time here. Nothing. Oh wait, oh, there it goes. So it's shooting its bracket. Looks like it's done. So I'm going to rotate it a little bit with the 24 on. I'm going to give it a little bit of a pano. Picture's gone now. It's back, but I've got it there. It's lined up about where I want it to be. So I'm going to tell it to trigger another picture. It's at 44% on the battery. I have not triggered another picture yet. It's set up to have a two second delay before it starts taking the picture. I wanted to be able to have it settle a little bit. There we go. Finally just took another graphic. I'm going to rotate this a little bit to the other side. I'm going to trigger another bracket. I'm at 38% on the battery. Remote controls at two bars. Satellites are at 21 satellites. And I'm at 1,000 feet away, 312 feet of altitude. I would push it a little further. I would really like to get out in front of this building that I like to take pictures of. This is the doTERRA campus. But I am afraid that I don't have enough time. So I'm going to turn around. See, it says it's uh, starting the automatic return to home. I'm going to let it just do it. See how that works. So it's returning to home on its own with 31% left. There it is, right up here. Again, giving me the same warning. The aircraft's battery is very low or the battery packs are too hot. Retarned home will start in three seconds. That's good. Now I can read the whole warning. Because before I was reading it, it was saying that the battery packs are too hot, I thought, but it's probably just in conjunction. And it keeps giving me the warning. Coming straight down right now. Straight above me at 300 feet. Probably right on top of us, so Let's see if I need to adjust this in. It's okay. But I'm gonna hit cancel and I'm gonna do this myself. You know I have an ID yeah, from the police. Yeah, do that. I, but still, right, you will you stay right here. What's your name? Drew Armstrong. What? Drew Armstrong. Here, I'll call you right now. By the way, I've got your, I got what you're doing recorded right here. It's live. 
or you're interfering with an FAA licensed pilot, that's a that's a federal offense. I'm not interfering. No, I'm you are too. I couldn't bring this down. I'm telling you my life. I can fly over anything. Anything. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yep, I can. I'm an FAA Part 107 licensed drone pilot. I can fly anywhere I damn well please in present grade. Absolutely. Yes. There is no privacy rule in present grade. I know what my laws are. That's twenty thousand dollars right there. If you get if that got damaged, I'd see you out. No, but I have that it's dangerous. It absolutely is not. Exciting. Those are a little warm. But not too bad. I'm at 13 satellites so far, 91% on the camera, so I've got plenty there. Auto on five gig gigahertz. So I'm, I'm set to go. Okay, 
I'm at 700 feet, 181 feet of altitude. It's a better picture now. Shoot. Hey, okay, got it. Well, pushing it out a little bit. It says I'm sixteen feet away, sixteen hundred feet away, seventeen hundred feet away. shoot again. That last one it took. It took this one just fine too. It seems that when I, like my, most of my trouble with the camera is coming from um, not having a good solid signal. I'm at 350 feet of altitude and 2100 feet of height. Eighty percent on the battery. The sun's just going down. I'd love to run over here onto the other side and get a picture. Oh, let's see. Let's see if I can do one more panel here. I don't know if I can. Oh, big, big, big turn. All right. Did you hear me yelling? What? Did you hear me yelling? I did not. Wait. Oh, a little bit ago, this, this guy, this, this guy that owns this farm over here, he's like, don't fly over my house. He came over here. Uh -huh. And I'm like, move. And you're, you're preventing me from landing. I'll talk to you. But you're preventing me from landing this, and it's running out of batteries. So oh, wow. I said, move out Which of the one way. Is and he's this like, one here? Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually going to go over and talk to him after I get done here and uh, teach him what the actual laws are. Uh-huh. That's odd. Oh, my God. Crazy, oh, controversial, con uh, confrontation-loving people, yeah, I guess. Yeah, hope your conversation goes oh, smooth. Oh, I have no idea, but yeah. I'll take my ID from the police department with me. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I will. Okay. I can't go any further out than I'm at. I'm at about 2,008 feet. And this is as far as I'm going to be able to get, it looks like, right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come home, not come home, I'm going to go forward a little bit, and I'm going to drop out to I don't get too much of a disconnection. We'll see. So now I'm at 1,700 feet at uh, worth the distance. Thank you. 
four minutes with 52% uh, um, of the battery left. I have one more set of batteries. And I think that what I'm going to do here is I'll actually come home and I'm going to see if the sunset lights up. We've got some nice wispy clouds. And I don't know, maybe I'll push it over here for a minute. It says I've got four minutes left and almost 50% of the battery. So I'm going to fly over the top of uh, the campus over here. Let's see if I can turn around and get a picture from the other way. I might have to walk over here just because of the distance, so I might have to fly it from it back here. This flight's been the best thing so far. I have 16% left and I'm only in the yellow, so I probably could push it a little bit more, but I'm afraid to do so. The fact that I can hold it with one hand is amazing. 